in the taxi because in Namibia I, I loved preaching to taxi guys because it was such a wonderful platform because when you get in the taxi mm -hmm. he's the only one there eh? mm -hmm. you just when we have the question mm -hmm. are you born again <laughs> And it's like you have arrested him there. He's, he's arrested in this place. <laughs> oh, the dustbin. <laughs> oh, come on. So, so I, I was preaching to this young man. You see, I was telling him to repent. Mm -hmm. That if he, does not, if he does not get born again, mm -hmm. he will die in his sins. If he dies without Christ, he will die and go to hell. And then it was. It looks like he was not so much concerned about his soul as he was about his grandmother's soul. So he asked me. He was driving the car. He asked me. So you mean my grandmother went to hell? That's the question he asked me. And I said, Well, if she didn't, if if she was not born again when she died, well, I'm sorry, but she may have gone to hell. You know, mm. because you see, the Lord is no respecter of men. Even as we answer these questions, we have to know. That the Lord is not a respecter of men. Even pastors who are indulging in immorality and all these things, they will go to hell. Mm -hmm. Because he says, if, now when you are a minister, there is a high accountability. Mm -hmm. So you see, the Lord is not the Lord is not man. He created the world. He chooses whomever he wants. Mm -hmm. He saves whomever he wants. And if someone does not meet his requirements, it doesn't matter whether he has not a head or he has a head. The Lord, full of compassion. See, even uh, uh, full of compassion, eh? look, even as we have this gospel, that's why we must be very uh, appreciative. I say, Lord, thank you that at least I got the chance to hear. Mm -hmm. Some people died without hearing the gospel. At least I got the chance to hear the gospel and believe it because some, some heard it and they didn't believe. Because for some of those who have not heard, that some of our users that they worship snakes and I and all these things, skies and mm -hmm. yeah, different kinds of idols, elephants and yeah, mm -hmm. as, as the prophet when he went to, to check the public he said, when they when the Africans were worshiping elephants, mm -hmm. some Europeans mm -hmm. risk their lives to go to Africa to go and preach to those who have not heard. Please stop worshiping the elephants, because. It is over now. The Father has sent His Son to die for us. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And that's the, that's the old deal here. So that at least those that have not yet heard and are still alive, mm. that they too may receive the Lord. For those that have, not, that have died and they have not heard, now that is, so to say, God's business now to take care of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is His problem now. <laughs> Amen? This one is now God's problem. And, and you know that there is nothing impossible to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, everything is possible to him. So, he so he has a plan for them. Yeah. So whether he will send them to the left or to the right, mm -hmm. based on whatsoever criteria he himself has developed, mm -hmm. that he has not yet made known to us except what he has put forth in scriptures in Romans chapter 2. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm making a huge bend now. Whether he is going to use what he has put in Romans or there is more that he has not revealed to us. That, that, that's not our problem now. Because for us it's just go and preach. The one who doesn't want to believe because we cannot explain very well what will happen to the one who died without hearing the gospel. Well then that is the choice he's making now. <laughs> this one, because everyone has a choice. You believe or you don't. So if the one, one chooses not to believe because there is no answer, to, to, to satisfy his thirst for understanding what will happen to his grandmother who died without hearing, mm -hmm. well, then, you see, it is now between him and the Holy Spirit because now it is only the Holy Spirit who can open your ears, and open your heart to comprehend the gospel of the, I mean, the message of the gospel. Ah, it's not an easy one. I mean, the gospel is very, very, uh, so to say, it, it is easy in the, in the sense that just believe. Amen. Mm. But there are, there, are, there are more complicated things that only the Lord deals with. Amen. Because he says, there are things he has not told us, there are things he told us. The things he told us, he said, that's for you. In the book of Deuteronomy, it was it, yeah, Numbers. Somewhere he told Moses, he said, the things that the Lord has made known to you, that's for you. That's the knowledge he gave you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. But the ones that he didn't tell you, now that his, that's his prerogative. 
Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Need a dictionary. Now, so should I say, that's now beyond our realm. That's now God's business. Yeah? <laughs> Let God mind his business now with respect to what he has not told us. Amen? And that's not a bad way to say, let God mind his business. <laughs> Amen? Because when the Lord came, when Jesus came, he said, I am up and about doing my father's business. So the father has his business. And his business is to tell us some things, <laughs> some things to keep away from us. Amen? Because some of the things will even make us, uh, ah, it will make our, our mind go, Galava <laughs> Kruzheni. Yeah? But we don't want our heads to spin for now. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure the Lord would, has taken has taken very good care of those that have not heard in His own way. Amen. He, he Himself has already, because He has already made the decision. Some people died many, many thousands of years ago, and they died and they came before the judgment seat, and they didn't believe, they did not hear. I mean, even during the days before the gospel came, the Lord chose Israel, and He revealed Himself only to Israel. The same question applies there. Now what about the Philistines who didn't? The Amalekites. <laughs> the Amalekites. The Hittites. <laughs> the, the Hittites and the Jebusites. Mm. <laughs> Nevertheless, he made a provision in the law. He said, but the foreigner who comes to you. And then he says, I also want to worship this guy. He says, then he also must follow this law. He said, the law I give you is for you and the foreigner who wants to live among you and worship me. Amen. Mm. For those that have not heard, or refuse to participate in this great uh, redemptive story that he has become with Israel. So for those ones, he will deal with them himself. He will deal with them. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if we uh, go a few more minutes? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, okay, we, 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 let, let us pray. Father, thank you for this uh, evening. Thank you for... Uh, this uh, wonderful Bible study, devotion you have given us. Thank you for the time you have given us today. And I pray, Lord, that you help us to, to dig deeper and understand your word. Open our spiritual ears and eyes to receive from you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 So, uh, yesterday the man of God went online, <laughs> not online, <laughs> went on air, yeah. and uh, and uh, delivered unto us the, the word of the Lord, yeah? Concerning what the Holy Spirit is saying with respect to the, what? the status of the church, the state of the church, uh, globally. Amen? And, uh, and I want us to, to, to discuss that because Brother Christian told me that you guys didn't watch the video <coughs> or, the, or, the, or listen to the prophecy. Not here. You have not, no, not here. Okay, not the devotion. Okay. Then... Uh, Let's um, let's first go to to, to 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 Revelation because we last time we ended with Revelation chapter three, the, uh, or maybe we'll not even uh, touch the Revelation, but uh, <clears throat> but we're in Revelation chapter three, and we were talking about the church in Sardis and why the Lord, the Lord God Almighty, the Father took away his Holy Spirit from this church, we're trying to understand why did the Holy Spirit leave? Amen? Because this church was dead. And you cannot be a dead church or a dead Christian if the Holy Spirit dwelleth in you. It is a, it is an oxymoron. No? Mm. <laughs> or should we say, uh, it's paradox. Yeah? How can you be filled with the Holy Spirit and yet you are dead? It is impossible. Impossibly. Amen? And, uh, and that raises a few questions for you and for me. That, that means after we read the book of uh, the, the Revelation chapter 3, the question we ought to ask ourselves then is, are you a dead Christian? You say, oh, why should I ask myself this question? <laughs> because... Uh, we understand here that uh, in our walk with the Holy Spirit, amen, in our walk with the Holy Spirit, uh, it is imperative, it is imperative that we always nurture that relationship with the Holy Spirit, amen. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> and we understood from uh, what he's saying here in Revelation 3 that uh, there is uh, a state of uh, the church in which they are walking, they are living their Christian lives, doing th some things, amen? Doing some things in the name of the Lord, hallelujah, in the name of who? The Lord. <laughs> and then the judgment day comes and he says, and you, where are you from? <laughs> they are walking with him, yes? Or next to him. Or next to him, or maybe behind him, we don't know, following. Maybe they are following him. Or so they think, yeah? They apparently, or so should we say, they began a walk with him, yes? They began a walk with him, and then they are worshipping and giving tithes and offerings and worshipping and then they appear before the throne and he says I don't know you that's tragedy we said that's a tragedy that's one that's one aspect another aspect is in Revelation they are worshipping then one day they woke up which you can really parallel with the other example also one day they woke up worshipping still and little did they know or unbeknownst to them, <laughs> he left. And they continued worshipping to a place where, while they were worshipping, he sent news to them. And he says, breaking news, Church of Sardis, you are dead. It, it's, uh, it, it's very puzzling. Amen. It's very shocking. Yeah, very shocking. And I remember one time, I was on the camera, I was recording this man. And as he was speaking, he says, Church of Christ in Namibia, you are wearing a filthy garment. And you must repent. <laughs> he says, if we don't repent, we will not enter. You can almost bring this to the church. In, you can almost parallel this to the Church of Christ in Sardis. It says, Church of Christ in Sardis, I see you are doing some things there. But did you realize that you have soiled your garment? You are dead. But you see, this message is not pleasant to walk up to someone and say, you're your garments are filthy when for the past 26 years they have apparently been walking with the Lord building massive churches and huge car parking area yeah? and businessmen and politicians are coming into the church yeah? and they're inviting massive preachers and these preachers they're even speaking to the politicians yeah? doing this for 20 something years and then you come and say, did you realize that actually when heaven looks at you, you are dead? Meaning, you have begun a walk with him. And then one time he left, you didn't even know. So you were deceived. That means you are walking in deception. You think you are walking pleasing unto him, but you are not. <laughs> but you see, this is also very interesting because... Uh, uh, because Wait, wait, don't, don't go. Uh, the thought just escaped. <laughs> Lord, the Lord will help me. Amen. So, so you see that they were walking, and as they were walking, he left, and then he left. They continued walking, and they thought he was still with them. And then he sent them news. He said, you are dead. So I said, this now begs for us to ask ourselves some serious questions. Are you a dead Christian? Are you in a dead church? When I was recording this man, after he finished recording, 
the pastor of this church, yeah, after he finished preaching, yeah, not recording, after he finished preaching, yeah, thank you very much, you are listening attentively. After he finished preaching, he left. And then when he left, after some time of his departure, the host, the host of this fiery preacher, the one who hosted this fiery preacher, preaching, telling the church that the church needs to repent because as it is in heaven, she's wearing a filthy garment and she will not enter if the Messiah comes right now at that time. When he left, after some time, the host stood fiercely against this message. He said, no, you cannot tell us to do such things. Yeah? Because when he was preaching there, he rebuked the gospel of money and the gospel of miniskirts in the church. He rebuked false apostles, false pastors, false preachers in the church. And then after he left, then the host said, no. We will not invite such a person again. Next time when we invite someone, we will make sure that we thoroughly investigate them and we give them what to teach. So next time someone comes and wants to preach, we will say, Sir, we have a topic for you to preach. Ha. Because someone came here and told us, Hey, Church of Christ, you are dead. You say, no, we refuse. <laughs> this message is not an easy message to me. Amen. That's why we need to ask ourselves seriously. <laughs> because they say, hey, someone came here and rebuked us and I was so hurt. We were so hurt. We say, no, if someone is to come and preach here again, we'll write down the sermon for him. <laughs> and we say, <laughs> say, you are going to preach this message. <laughs> you see but the ones who are doing this if you ask them are you alive are you a dead church you say ah, why are you asking me such a question people are dying there they have not received Jesus you are asking me if I am a dead church <laughs> Amen. so this is a very serious question and, uh, and I think we end there but see the message of last night was very very uh, a, a very tremendous message. Please pass me my phone as I, as I, as I check up some scriptures there. And, uh, and I, I, I made an observation and I realized, but you see, in, it was in, the, in January, not January, yes, January the 15th. Oh. When, yes, when the prophet went on air again mm -hmm. and gave the, the prophecy mm -hmm. of the coming of the Messiah. How the glory of the Lord came and hit the earth, and then he says, like strings, he says, the strings of the glory. And then it caught them and then began to pull them. He says, you could see the strings of the, of the, of the glory. And so they were taken up like this. He yeah? says, they went, is it left or right? They went right or left first. First they turned left, and then they turned right, and then they went straight like this. And then they were standing right in front of the gate of heaven. And then, wow, this massive mount, this huge mountain, this mountain-like glory with beautiful, golden, glorious stairs. He says, and he saw them how they were stepping. The last two, three steps, how they were entering into the kingdom of their father that they have travailed so much for, that they have so longed for, that they have so long awaited. And that was a very powerful vision. And, uh, and then he described how they were wearing this turban. What is the word? You twine, yes. When you take a cloth and you twine it and you twine it, and so that, that, that cloth is twining like this, and they wrapped it around their head here, or it was wrapped around their head, and that is the tabern, the holy priestly tabern of heaven. And then he described what the garment, the garment or the holy angelic garment. Well, he said, in heaven, because the prophet said, it, it, it almost looks like the, 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 the angelic wings, a part of the garment almost looked like the wings. 
that reminds me of the words of Jesus in the book of uh, Matthew, I think, where he said, when he was asked the question about marriage, and he said, well, in heaven, they neither marry nor are given into marriage, for they are like angels. So that, that also rings, that, that comes out strongly. And uh, so, so that was January the 15th. And then he continued preaching that gospel, or that vision, that message, when he was in Mombasa. Amen? The men of God went to Mombasa. And mighty things took place there. And then, exactly one month later, now if you take January the 15th, da? Wait, I'm mistaken. It's March, not one month. March 15th. It's two months. Two months and one day. But it's near to that date. So two months later. Two months later. Two months. February is two months. Yes. February March. We are in March. We are in March, and it was the 16th. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, two, two months. Yeah, two months. Two months, but, but to be more accurate, yeah? <laughs> let's say from the 15th of January to the 15th of February. From the 15th of February to the, because February is also a month, yes? Yeah, that, that. <laughs> from the 15th of February <laughs> to the 15th of March. That's, a, 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 what is it? Precisely one month and then one day. No, two months. Two months and one day. So the Lord spoke to his servant again. And this time the Holy Spirit, I love the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then speaks to his servant and that glorious heavenly sound uh, worship that broke out before the, the Holy Spirit told him he said what? the coming of the Messiah is in, in hand. hand I thought it was a mistake maybe it's the, no, it was supposed to be at hand not at hand, not at hand. In, in hand in hand, yes but now let's read some scriptures because now, I love the Lord so much. Uh, and you see, I think this was, this was the Lord's... Uh, uh, the Lord has put this in my heart some, some many, many years ago. Not really many, many years ago. So I'm still young. I'd say 2008. 2008. That's, oh, that's a year before the prophet came to Namibia. So, I was... I was walking. I still remember this day I was walking. And uh, I was pondering on how that you cannot read the New Testament and not and not be confronted with the fact that the, the, what, the coming of the Messiah is the next big event in the church. Amen? That the coming of the Messiah is such a huge deal in heaven. You know, I was still in my infants, in infant, infancy, in my infant Christian year, uh, in my infant years of my Christianity. About four years, just about four years after I got born again. Yes. This is still my infancy, yeah. But see, and I've read the scriptures, and it troubled me that I was not hearing so much about the coming of the Messiah. Now, I haven't attended so many churches at that point, but somehow in me I knew, I, you know, and I've attended a few, but the message of the coming of the Messiah was not being preached as I am hearing it now from the prophet of old. Mm -hmm. And that troubled me. I was like, why, why are pastors not preaching the coming of the Messiah? And I, and I remember perhaps one of the very few things I really told the Lord in such a way. I said, Lord, if you call me to be a pastor, I'm going to preach this gospel. Of, you know, I'm going to preach the coming of the Messiah. Because it was clear. Just read Matthew. Just read Mark, Luke, John. You know, go to Romans. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Chapter 15, the whole chapter is just dedicated to the coming of the Messiah. <laughs> Amen. Titus. Timothy, Hebrews, everywhere, Rome, Rome, Revelation, James. I mean, everywhere, just the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Messiah, the day of his coming. It's, it's all over the place. Yet people, they are, they are putting all that aside. And then they look at one scripture that says, Beloved, <laughs> look, I'm not mocking scriptures, all right? But 
I'm saying, these pastors now, they put aside all other scriptures, and then they look at this one and they say, Beloved, I wish that you, that I wish above all things, that you may prosper, even as your soul prospers. They take this scripture, <laughs> and then they put the coming of the Messiah aside like this. <laughs> and they say, wait a little bit. I have some money to take care of. <laughs> God forbid. Uh, they put aside the coming of the Messiah like this. And then they look at beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, even as thy soul prospereth. As a uh, 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 money here I come. And then from there, they begin to shout, Money cometh to me now. <clears throat> and then they go all over the world looking for or honorarium. And then when someone wants them to preach, they say, You must pay me 70,000 euros. <laughs> and then they run around and then they say, Private jets. And then they. Yeah? Yet the coming of the Messiah takes up the huge volume from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. Even Genesis. The creation speaks of the coming of the Messiah. Even there. But, oh, sorry. So, let's read uh, the, the, the scriptures the man of God read. Okay, that's uh, in the book of uh, Psalm 18, Psalm 31. Okay. Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Psalm 31. Amen. <coughs> Hannah. Psalm 18. Psalm 31. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then I read Joel 1, and then you read James 5. James 5. Hallelujah. Yes? Yes. Okay. For now. Okay, Psalm 18. Yes. Okay, and then you read Matthew 20, and then you Matthew 24. So you, Psalm. 31. And Matthew 24. Psalm 18, 30. And James 5. And James 5, yes. <clears throat> Just 30. Psalm 18, 30, yes. Psalms 18, verse 30. Mm -hmm. As for God, yes. His way is perfect. Mm. The word of the Lord mm -hmm. is proven. Amen. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. Hallelujah. He is a shield to all those trust in Him. Now we are not reading the scriptures in the order that the men of God read them. But, uh, yes. He's a shield to those who trust in him. him. That's 1830. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Which one did I give you to read? Psalm 31. Which, what did I say you read? Mm, we just said Psalm 31 in Matthew 25. Verse 23, okay. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just looking for the scriptures here. I'm not reading any more. Huh? Okay, yours next is Joel, yes? No, no, James 5. Ah, and who's reading Joel? You say. Oh, did I say I'm reading Joel? Yes, sir. Okay, powerful. All right. Psalm 31, 23. Psalm 31, 23. O love the Lord, mm. O ye his saints, mm. for the Lord preserve the faithful mm -hmm. and plentiful um, rewardeth the proud doer. Yeah? <laughs> and plentifully rewards those who are proud. Is that it? Proud doer? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Matthew 25? Matthew, did I say 25 or 24? 24. 24? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, but let him read James first. James 5? Yes. Uh huh. James uh, 5v. James chapter 5. We go to. Hmm. Excuse me, yes? Do you excuse me? Yes, sir. Okay. If anyone. Mm -hmm. Seven? Uh, yes, he's talking about the James 5 7 to 8. Do you have amplified there? Yes, sir. All right. Amplified. Should I read in amplified? So yes. wait patiently, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, Amen. until the coming of the Lord. Mm. Mm -hmm. The farmer waits expectantly mm. for the precious harvest from the land, mm -hmm. being patient about it mm. until it receives the early and late rains. 
you to be patient, strengthen your hearts, mm. keep them energized and firmly committed to God. Mm. Because the coming of the Lord is near. The coming of the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. Joel 1. What, which one did I give you? Matthew, Matthew 24. Okay, let's see. Matthew 24. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but read verse 9 also. Sorry. Matthew 24, verse 9, right? No, yours is Matthew 24. I want him to read verse 9. Verse 9. Oh. Matthew 24, verse 36. Do not complain mm. against one another, believers, mm. so that you will not be judged for it. Mm. Look, the judgment is standing right at the door. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Matthew chapter 24, <laughs> verse um, 36. 36. Mm. But of that day mm. and hour knoweth no man, mm. no, mm. not the angels of heaven, mm -hmm. but my Father only. Hallelujah. All right, then I read uh, Joel, chapter 1, yes, mm -hmm. I read uh, verse 14, but I will start from verse 13 to 15, okay? Mm -hmm. It says, put on sackcloth, Joel chapter 1, verse 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. put on sackcloth, you priests, and mourn, wail, you who minister before the altar. Come, spend the night in sackcloth, you who minister before my God. For the grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of your God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas for the day, for that day. For the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. Hmm. Matthew. Again? Did you read it already? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, sorry. Okay, now, look at uh, J Titus. Titus also, yes, it's not here. Oh, okay, Psalm 113, verse 3. Did you read that one already? No, sir. Psalm 113. Verse 1, 1, 3. Verse 3. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Amplified or... Any? Uh, any. From okay. the rising of the sun to its going down, mm. the Lord's name is to be praised. Hallelujah. Mm. From the rising of the sun and it's going down. to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. praised. Now, yes, let's read another one. James 1, not James 1. Titus chapter 2. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But you see, a time comes mm -hmm. when a people have to confront their eternity. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like this. And a time comes when we have to repent. If we really want to enter the kingdom of God, if we want to enter the kingdom of glory, Psalm not sound. Eh. Titus chapter 2. Verse 2. For the grace, verse 11. Okay. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. <clears throat> it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness, and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you see, one message that came out clearly last night from the message of the Lord, from the message that the Holy Spirit passed on to his servant, is the fact that the church is not ready. The church, all over the world, in many nations, 
Not the entire church, just a few of it. The man of God said he, he cried, he wept for those that will not enter. For the church that will miss the rapture. And yet, when the Lord sent the, check, the, the, the message, sent the apostles, it is so that the message transforms the hearts of people that they may come to know him and enter. Nevertheless, even as the Holy Spirit spoke to the prophet, we understand that in the scripture indeed, that there will be the majority that will fail to enter. That is disheartening. It is just, just uh, try one day to just really just look at the church, some people that you know. Some people that you know, they go to church, they're wearing miniskirts, they're going to church, they're stealing, they're going to church, they're cheating in their exam, they're going to church, they're, you know, sleeping around, they're going to church and they're doing all these things. And just look at them and just ask yourself, is this one really going to miss the rapture? Or, no, no, that way. Just look at that, that act. <laughs> Someone may be saying, no, look at yourself. No, look at that act. <laughs> look at that one that you care so much about. And just imagine that this one, if the rapture takes place right now, this one will not go. The heaviness in the heart. The people we know. The pastors we know. You see them on TV. You've even visited their churches. And just to imagine, just to think, you know, and in their walk, so confident, you know, that I'm going to the Lord. But you can see that the life is not mirroring Christ. As we talked about Genesis 1, the Gospel of Genesis 1, he said, he wants to bring us to a place where we are the true image bearers of Christ. But you can see that in these, some of these people, they still love worldliness. The church still loves worldliness. You go to a church, and indeed, as many people have said, you know, even an, unbel an unbeliever goes to church and says, no, that church feels just, just feels like a nightclub. So now, you have this church that looks like a nightclub, so filled with people, and the pastor doesn't want to rebuke sin. And you just look at this popular church. They're on TV. And, when, and just look at that and say, so this church is remaining. So is this the church that is staying? It's not a fun. It's not fun. You know, just to understand why the, the, the Lord will really make his prophet to really cry for the church that is remaining. But we know that the Lord is not a respecter of men. I think sometimes we forget that. The, you see, it doesn't matter how many people you have led to the Lord. It doesn't matter. The Lord is not a respecter of mankind. If you are not preparing to enter, if you are not preparing your garment, if you are not keeping your garment clean, fine linen, bright and clean, Indulging in worldliness. See, like the prophet of the Lord has told us so many things that we need to stay away from. Movies. He says, <laughs> when he came to Namibia, he said, going to the movies, he said, the movie plays is the altar of the devil. Now, that's what he said <laughs> when he came to Namibia. Of course, you will not find it in the scriptures here. Yeah? Because in the days the scriptures were written, they didn't have theaters. But that's that's a shock, yeah, because in this in this church that loves the world so much, it says going to the movie theaters is going to the altar of the devil because there is where they exalt worldliness. So you're going there and be a willful participant. He said he's saying stay away from this evil music of the world, for instance, yeah? And the way the church loves worldliness, 
the way the church loves to be associated with some worldly figures so that when you are associated with such and such a person and then many people will somehow then get to hear your message but then and then as they do that the message they preach now is called a seeker friendly message it's a message that does not rebuke sin it's a message that lacks in holiness it's a message that just exclaims that that just upholds you know earthly success four keys to living a prosperous life five keys to a healthy relationships yet even in those five keys to a healthy relationship they are not exalting Christ they are not exalting the entry they are not exalting the coming of the Messiah and the Holy Spirit told the, the, the prophet that you see so many cities are not ready and I was wondering did he mention Moscow also? It will not be surprising that the Holy Spirit may mention Moscow. Mm -hmm. yeah? But you see, and for us that are hearing this word, let us strive to be that remnant that enters. Amen? Mm -hmm. Because Jesus said, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Mm -hmm. And many there be that find it. Mm -hmm. But the tragedy today is, when you have a pastor that takes a scripture like this, and then he says, this broadness is not the broadness of the way that leads to hell. It is the broadness of success in life. He says, even some Christians, they are in this broad way and they are not going to hell just because they are in the broad way. Now when you have famous pastors saying such things, is this church really preparing for the coming of the Messiah? Yes. Now, you can already see even in the messages, when a pastor wants to just it's called a watered down message watered down watered down just so easy going but we said here that there were two people that heard jesus they went out to preach one began to build on the same. rock another one went to build on the same they all came from what he says he that hears my words and does not do them is like one who builds on the sand. He that hears my word and does them is like one who builds on the rock. So there are so, so so you can understand why some of these are pastors now. Because it says they heard, and then when they heard Jesus, then they say no. <laughs> you see, this broad way he is talking about is just health and prosperity. It doesn't mean if you're on the broad way, you are going to hell. It doesn't mean if you're on the narrow way, then you are the one who's going to have heaven only. That's the sick message in the church today. Of course, someone says, it's not the whole church. Nah. But that is the image of the church. Nah? That is the image. And, and we see in the book of Revelation chapter 3 says, so the church has put up a certain image for herself and people know her in a certain way. They have a certain reputation. But this reputation, this makeup the church has put on, this camouflage, it says, it is actually hiding the real picture which is called the dead image. And the dead, a dead church will not enter heaven. See, this message that of, the, of, the, of the Holy Spirit to the prophet last night is to really encourage us to strive to enter. Jesus said, I tell you, many people will try. Jesus himself said, many people will try, but they will not make it, but strive to enter. Now you may think Jesus is saying no one is entering. No, that's not true. But Jesus is saying, for you to enter the kingdom of God, it is not a joke. You don't just go there and filthify yourself and then come and say, here I am, I want to enter heaven. The kingdom of God is a serious place. Amen? And in this world, that in this, the, the church now has aligned herself with the worldly philosophy and the worldly psychology, and even to rebuke sin now, is looked at as hate. Or it looks as, as intolerance. But we are not supposed to be tolerant towards sin. Amen? And when you see that 
Only few people turn up where, where the message is being is strong against sin. They know that that's a good place to be. <laughs> because where the message is so easy going, and packed, that's where now it's easy for Jezebel to come. She comes, she enters the, the camera department. <laughs> yeah? Camera department, she's standing there, yeah? With some tight trousers, and people are trying to focus on the pastor. <laughs> but she's standing on the camera with tight trousers or mini skirt, whatever. Yeah? People are trying to focus on the pastor, and the pastor is going this way. <laughs> <laughs> the Jezebel the is standing in the middle there, <laughs> the, with the miniskirt. This is the things happening. I mean, not even the ladies, but the Jezebel is through the men that are, that, 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 that are not honoring God in their bodies. Amen? What is even shocking is, and some of these people, it's even, or there's even smoking in there, is, is, is in charge of the, the music, or the, or the, you know, sound, and, and, and while the church is going on, jumping, 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 he goes out to take a smoke break, and then he comes back, and then he continues mixing the sound. But you see, even worse than that, there are even things worse than that. Mixing, mixing, going and taking a smoke break, and then coming back. Mixing, mixing, going and taking a smoke break, in the church. In the church. That's very bad. But now, and not so, not everyone is preparing for the coming of the Messiah. And the Lord said, the Lord said that in this hour, He's going to shut some people's ears. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 1, not chapter 1, but chapter 6. It is, it, it, it's, you know, it hard, not, not hardens, it, uh, it makes me shudder, so to say, that there are famous ministries that are not preparing for the coming of the Messiah. And some are still waiting for the next great move of God. They're waiting for the next great move of God before the rapture takes place. Yet the next, the great move of God is already here, the revival. They're waiting for revival, but revival is already here. Yet, look at this, look at this irony. When someone in Australia, just a a computer technician claims, yeah, claims that he is Jesus, of course false. This one is not even a pastor, yeah? Claims he's Jesus one day, and then the newspaper picks it up. The next week is in Australia. Next week in Namibia you see it in the national newspaper. 